Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 73 today for the Las Vegas Grand Prix in Season 5. If you guys did miss the opening round of this brand new season, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one down under at the Australian Grand Prix. Of course, it's 2027 in the timeline in-game. Last season, we had an amazing one winning both championships and we come into this season as reigning world champions with Lamborghini, but the landscape of Formula 1 has changed drastically. Aston Martin, Audi, Haas, all these teams in the top four along with us, and uh, the first round was as chaotic as you would imagine a first round being of a season, unreliability, a little bit of rain, and also some FIA safety car controversy right at the end. A bit of a messy ending, unfortunately, but uh, in the end, it was a great Grand Prix for our team, third place for us, but ominously, Teo Porcher, our brand new teammate, uh, breakout star from last season, wins his first ever Formula 1 race in the first race for this team. I've said it before, he's actually quicker on paper than Gasly was last season in terms of stats. And it, straight away, he's performed. I think we have actually probably already created a bit of a monster. And he may be quite a tall order to try and topple. But we will try our best, of course, in its early days in the season. And to that effect, we're still actually upgrading the car. Because uh, the chassis obviously got reset over the winter. We had one final upgrade to actually purchase. Once that comes in, though, we'll have a maxed out car once again in this career series. But we come to round two, the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Um... Last season, not exactly happy memories here with that uh, jammed gear. But as a race, Las Vegas so early on in the season, I, I think in my opinion, is very, very exciting because there's so many overtaking opportunities with the slipstream. But uh, a little bit of traffic for us to contend with as we go into Saturday for qualifying here around Nevada. And it's going to be a little bit of a question mark of uh, what our pace is going to be like. I guess every race, really, until the pecking order changes, is going to be a big question mark because now having, you know, in the R&D chart, Audi, Haas, Aston Martin and ourselves up there in the top four, there's no, like, you know, previous seasons we knew a McLaren and Red Bull was going to was gonna show up eventually, you know, in, in Q2, in Q3, even if they didn't show up in Q1. But now, genuinely don't know what we're what to expect, really. And the only thing we can say is Teo Porcher clearly is taking a lot of confidence from his win as he goes top of this session. Felipe Dragovic, unknowingly for him, has picked up a penalty of some sort, maybe for blocking, so he's going to be five places back on the grid. That's a bit unfortunate for him and for Haas, because they should really be making the most of their car right now, because obviously, even though they are on the back foot, Ferrari, Red Bull, McLaren, all these bigger teams, they can make upgrades, and they will make upgrades, and eventually maybe they'll catch back up, but uh, at the moment, we need to be making the most of this, as do we, obviously, and we need to try and make the most of this car, and Porcher so far is doing that, maximising his potential. I need to try and find a bit more pace in the car, and that might just happen right here in Q2, as we go quickest of all, ahead of Carlos Sainz and Gasly, the two Audis, and we end Q2 in P1. That is a confidence booster for sure, to be nearly four tenths ahead of Teo Porcher, but uh, Verstappen is knocked out in the Ferrari. Mick Schumacher actually wakes up now and shows that form he was showing all throughout last season for Ferrari. Felipe Dragovic, the only Haas, into the top 10. Both Red Bulls make it through and an Alpine. So that's pretty good, actually, showing that the Ford engine in the back of the Red Bull car clearly is just that good that it's going to drag Red Bull into the top 10 fight here. Whereas last episode, they weren't anywhere near the top 10 in Australia. And the Alpine, again, Alpine, I just have this thing about being very good at Las Vegas, to be fair. So Ocon in the frame, in the fight, maybe. But uh, the usual suspects then, new usual suspects of uh, myself and Paul Chair, a Haas, We've got, uh, obviously, a, a two Audis and then, obviously, the Aston Martin. Leclerc wanting to do better. He didn't qualify too well in Australia. Sonoda was taking all the plaudits. This time, Sonoda is the one that has to fall foul. I think he actually got knocked out earlier in the, in the day. So it's all down to Leclerc, maybe. But right now, we're P9. We've made improvements, and we go up to P2. But Teo Porcher goes quicker. What a performance from the Frenchman, the young lad, that's two poles in a row, is it not? Two poles in a row. Race win last time out. This guy's a monster. I think we've genuinely created something that we might. Very large difficulty beating 
is the, is the words I'm trying to find. But it's a front row lockout for Lamborghini, which is great, showing that our engine power is very good. But the Audi engine power is there as well. They're locking up this second row. Our old teammate and nemesis, Gasly, in third. Signs fourth, but there, Leclerc does a good job. P5, that's much better for him compared to last episode. But um, yeah, the Red Bulls, genuinely with their engine pace, actually look all right. And Schumacher and Ocon also featuring in the top 10 compared to last, you know, the first round is a bit of a surprise. But you know, that's, you know, that's what's going to happen this season. Track to track, there's going to be these differences where engine power maybe factors in and brings other teams in. And then you get to other circuits where the downforce and the chassis is going to make a difference. And maybe that's where the traditional big names of this sport have fallen foul in the winter break. But for us, I guess we just kind of push all that aside. And the focus is on our teammate. Can we beat him? And can we try and get that win that kind of slipped away from us in Australia and make up for it here in Las Vegas? Let's go to the grid. Welcome along to Las Vegas. It's Viva Las Vegas tonight. As for the first time ever, the Formula One cars are racing along the strip. I can't wait to see what this place has in store for F1 tonight. 17 corners, three straights, two DRS zones, and the glitz and glamour of Las Vegas as we race around the 3.8 miles of Sin City. The strip has been taken over to become a straight tonight, commanding top speeds of around 212 miles an hour. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Theo Porsche lines up on pole position and the owner driver alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Sainz, Leclerc, Norris, Liam Lawson, Mick Schumacher, Ocon, Albon, Sonoda, Drogovic, Verstappen, Russell, Ricardo, Bottas, Oscar Piastri, Fittipaldi, Perez, Sargent, Magnussen, and Joe Guan Yu. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Anthony Davidson joins me again for today's race. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Mercedes. We have some changes to the regulations, of course, which mainly revolve around the chassis this year. And unfortunately, the early signs are that they've not adapted particularly well. There are a few downcast looks within the team this weekend. I think they've been hit fairly hard by the new regs but this is only the first step down a long road of development. And even if they don't maximize their points today, there are plenty more up for grabs this season. So last time out in the opening round of this season, we got caught out making that extra pit stop onto intermediates. And we lost the win that way because we were leading. Obviously, poor chair did overtake us fair and square on track as well as Sonoda, and we, we just gambled that extra pit stop when the rain started to fall. Didn't work out for us. This time round, I think an extra pit stop, going aggressive and committing early to a two-stop that we know is very viable around Las Vegas with the tyre wear you face around this brand new circuit, very slippery surface. Um, I, I think we can make it work, and we, make, we can make amends for what happened in Australia. So I'm going to commit early to the two-stop, maybe go on these tyres for seven to eight laps, on to hards and then look to go on a fresh pair of softs right to the end of the race. But at the moment, all eyes on the right-hand side. Terra Porcher, our teammate on pole position. We're in second place. as a front row lockout for Lamborghini as we go to five red lights. And we're underway for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Round number two of this season is underway. And into turn one, Porcher, very calm and collected. Not so much for us as we bottle it a little bit in the break zone. We try to get a bit of a jump around the outside. Instead, I locked up and had to take avoiding action to not hit our, our, our more junior teammate. And Leclerc has sailed through, of all people. Leclerc was uh, P5, wasn't it? P5 on the grid. He's now found himself in P2. So an electric start for the man from Monaco in the Aston Martin Honda. We have to settle down for third place. It's deja vu. It's uh, our teammate in first and Aston Martin ahead of us. And we're in third place. It's all feeling a bit too familiar to Australia, unfortunately. That was... um. 
That wasn't great. It was a good start initially, but I completely just made a mess of turn one in the break zone. Just, I, I got caught off a little bit by poor chair moving to the inside. I thought we could try and dance it around the outside and instead I just had my pants pulled down because we went far too deep into the corner. And instead now we've got pressure from Carlos Sainz in the lead Audi. Norris does well in the Red Bull Ford to be up in fifth place, but there goes the Spaniard on the left-hand side. It's a, it's a drag race, quite literally, here in Las Vegas on the back straight. Audi versus Lamborghini. Technically, obviously, these two uh, car companies, uh, well, well, Audi owns Lamborghini technically in the uh, car brand world. But here in Formula One, two rivals, very much bitter rivals here, looking for supremacy. And we're going to try and re-overtake Carlos Sainz, who he had a bit of a tango through the last couple of corners. Meanwhile, Teo Porcher looking calm as ever in P1 as we do go ahead and overtake uh, uh, Sainz to get back into third. But look at the uh, great, great start by Leclerc. Jumps the Audi of Pierre Gasly, I think that is, on the right-hand side. And then there's our absolute howler of a turn one. And Leclerc's pretty calm and just, uh, just, just cuts through everyone, really, and gets up to second place. Very nice for him. So lap three onto four. DRS now activated. It's poor chair from Leclerc. Myself in third chasing after. Sainz under pressure from Lando Norris. Then you've got Gasly. Ock on Sonoda. Three wide, is it? Sonoda maybe looking for the double overtake on the Alpine and Pierre Gasly. Sonoda was knocked out, I think, in Q1, in fact, or, or maybe Q2 and just was down in P14 or something or other but Sonoda either way he's had to recover and he's recovered very well so far he's up to P6 only after four laps and that's a great double pass there as uh, Ocon and Gasly continue to uh, fight well actually you know Gasly is under pressure sorry from Lawson now in the uh, other Red Bull Ford so Red Bull do look a bit quicker around here due to their engine power the same can't be said for Ferrari, Mercedes or McLaren, really. Albon, the highest of all of them, and he's P11. Out the points right now behind Felipe Drogovic in the lead Haas. And uh, Piastri, the champion from Season 3, struggling in P18. Only just ahead of Sergio Perez in the Andretti Cadillac. Yeah, times really have changed very quickly in only two seasons in game. As we're now back with our POV on lap seven and we have finally, finally bridged the gap to Leclerc. Took four laps to one pull away from Carlos Sainz and break his DRS and he's been yo-yo switching about with Lando Norris every single time they get on that back straight back and forth. And for us, we've just been slowly chipping away at Leclerc's uh, well, gap to us, and we're finally within maybe DRS on the back straight. I've been within DRS on the first straight two times now, but in sector two, that Aston Martin, very, very solid. He's been pulling away from me, but not this time. We are within that one second. The rear wing will be activated for us, and we can reduce the drag, pull him in, and hopefully get into second place, and then immediately, hopefully, set our sights on our own teammate. Here we go, Leclerc. Well, he's a sitting duck. It really is that simple. In Las Vegas, you know, when you don't have DRS yourself to help defend and you clearly don't have too much battery maybe for Leclerc there as well, it's just impossible to defend. It's just a case of playing the patient game and a little bit of maybe 4D chess by the time we get to the end of this race maybe in terms of where you want to be on the final lap basically but that's a long way away it's only lap 8 of 25 and we're now within one second of our teammate poor chair but lap 8 signals the time to maybe come in I said I was going to go aggressive and commit to the two stop and that I am it's tempting to stay out and try and maybe overtake poor chair on track. But I have my plan and we're sticking to it. We come in. I did make a bit of a mess of the entry. I can't lie there. I think I was way too cautious coming into the pit lane. I kind of forgot where the where the line was for the limiter. Uh, hopefully won't lose us too much time there. But we're in for an early stop. No one else is in. Probably won't be for a, for a, for a lap or two minimum. But uh, we know this works. We've, we've had multiple races on this game with Las Vegas where if you just go early enough on the hards and then go on softs at the end, you're literally flying, setting purples every lap at the end of this race. And uh, it, it's no match unless obviously you are, you are able to build a massive gap. But poor chair was within one second of ourselves. So he's not kind of walked away with this. The only problem may just be this traffic. We've got one, two, three, four, five 
cars to try and overtake before we get a bit more clean air. And these cars are, well, they are slower. The McLaren, Ferrari, Merck, weird to say. But yeah, these days in season five, all three of these cars are slow posts compared to us. And we should be able to overtake them. But we need to try and do it without losing too much time. Can we get Albon on the exit here? On the outside, turns to the inside for the subtle left before the main straight. Albon, oh God, Albon made, made contact with us. What was that? What was that from the tie-brick driver? Albon, I think he turned into us basically. I, I know I gave him a little bit of a squeeze, but I felt like the move was done. Was it not? As we look at a replay, so I overtake him very easily. I'm fully ahead of him now. He comes back at me and I didn't know how alongside me he was. And he's made contact with my floor. And it's pretty severe, actually. It's a yellow, yellow on the barge wooden floor. So that is going to hurt me. Not right now, because we've got fresh tyres. But eventually, once my tyres start to wear, I'm going to feel that damage mid-corner. So that is not ideal. That already may be a bit of our undoing versus poor chair versus Leclerc as we continue to try and make progress and overtake Max Verstappen in the Ferrari into turn one. We slot in behind Russell looking to make a move on the outside. Oh, Ocon! Ocon spun it! And my life flashed before my eyes because that could have been a DNF for us. We did very well to, to, to avoid uh, Ocon. I saw, I saw him a bit early in the corner and thought I need to go to the outside of him. But the safety car is now out and... That's, that's not going to help us at all. Because now, poor Chair and Leclerc, they'll have a free pit stop. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. This is the replay then. At this point, yeah, I, I did well to spot him at this, at this stage to then turn hard right. Usually, I would just continue the, the line on the curb to try and overtake Russell. But needs must there. And we did very well to avoid the Alpine. So even though I'm a little bit annoyed at the safety car timing uh, in this race, at least we're not out of the race completely. Because, yeah, this could have been... <sighs> I mean, from Ocon's POV, he's probably very happy I missed him. That could have been so sketchy for the Frenchman in the Alpine as we now go through, overtake a bunch of cars, but the cars we care about are ahead of us because under the safety car, they get that free pit stop. That's frustrating. So we've not only lost track position because I'm adamant we would have come out in first if there was no safety car. So we've lost track, track position to poor chair and Leclerc and we've got the floor damage from Albon. Brilliant. Two things haven't gone our way. Um, yeah, maybe this is karma for obviously the very iffy safety car period at the end of the Australian Grand Prix. But we've got a very interesting top 10. Norris doing really well to be in P4 there. Sonoda still having a solid recovery. Schumacher up in P7. Drogovic in P9 ahead of a load of big names and big teams. He's got to be pretty happy with that still uh, in the Haas, especially with the five place penalty he had on the grid. But here we are then. Safety car is coming in. Lap 12. We're in P3 with some floor damage. Damage, but still got some determination to try and maybe attack the cars ahead of us. Poor chair, our teammate, leads the way as we finally get underway onto lap 13. Took an absolute age for poor chair to decide to actually bolt. Of course, he is the leader, so he can choose absolutely when he wants to go. And he's, he's chosen wisely because he's uh, not really felt any pressure from Leclerc. And uh, already, maybe, you're seeing the difference in performance now with my floor damage. That mid-corner right-hander was just so slow for me. I'm already over a second behind Leclerc now. That is not great. I'm hoping Leclerc and Porsche fight a bit as we've got Bottas out of the race. And Leclerc, oh, Leclerc was about to make a move, but the virtual safety car is out. Oh, God, that Leclerc's going to be fuming with that. He was literally about to make a move to the inside and the virtual safety car's come out. Brilliant. Well, uh, poor chair can breathe a sigh of relief. And it's because of this. Bottas, uh, on his return to Mercedes, not having a great time in his second race for Merck as he's uh, out of the Grand Prix, pulls up. And now the virtual safety car ends on the next lap. And immediately, immediately, Leclerc is on to Teo Porche. This is brilliant stuff. Leclerc on the outside. The Frenchman on the right of Porche. They're still going to be at it side by side. It's the blind left-hander. And Porche commits. He's still there. They're still going at it wheel to wheel. But Leclerc is able to dance it through on the inside to get up into P1. What a battle, though between the man from Monaco and the Frenchman. Very close G1 
geographically. This is the new gen versus the, well, current new gen of Leclerc, really. Is uh, Leclerc still looking for that first world championship and looking for a first win with Aston Martin this season? Porcher has already secured one win for Lamborghini. Can he get a second, though, as he continues to put the pressure on Leclerc? And because they've been fighting so much, we've closed up to them. So if they just want to continue fighting this much, there might just be, might just be half a chance that this car right here with the floor damage could maybe make some sort of inroad. We're going to have to see. Meanwhile, behind this on lap 15, plenty of fighting going on in the bottom half of the top 10. Lando Norris fighting his old pal Carlos Sainz and Sainz trying to get through, but uh, Lando actually re-overtakes him into turn one and the red ball back into sixth place. Sainz seventh, Drogovic very strong in P8 and the Haas. Uh, ahead of Lawson and Russell Verstappen just outside the top 10 for Ferrari. Movement going on once again. Sainz v Norris. Sainz gets the better of Lando this time round. And Dragovic has followed Carlos Sainz through. The Haas has just overtaken the second Red Bull. And now Lando Norris under pressure from his own teammate Liam Lawson. Very close stuff actually between Red Bull that Merck of Russell and Verstappen uh, and even Alpine and, uh, and McLaren. So all the kind of teams familiar with fighting each other for wins and podiums, they're all just having to settle for fighting each other for, uh, well, best of P8 down to P13 is uh, Piastri's having a torrid time down in 20th place there as uh, Lawson does overtake Lando Norris and it seems like Lando is just going backwards. So maybe he has a problem in the cockpit potentially because Lawson really pulls away quite quickly as uh, also, by the way, you may have just noticed Leclerc got into first place and has overtaken Porcher. Those two have swapped again on the main straight as Felipe Dragovic continues this charge up the order and overtakes Carlos Sainz. The Brazilian is up into P6 for Haas. It's a really, really good effort. Uh, like I said earlier, considering especially that five-place penalty he had on the grid, uh, very good recovery for him, very good recovery for Sonoda to be in P4, as we're now falling away from the two leaders again as the safety car's out. No, it's a red flag instead, and it's for a huge incident just at the sphere section. I think that's the Haas of Fittipaldi and Mick Schumacher involved, and that's why the red flags come out. Massive blockage on circuit. Well, this changes everything. So everyone is going to be doing a two-stop effectively because everyone will get a free chance to change their tyres here for a second set of five red lights. So this basically has turned this last bit of the Las Vegas Grand Prix into a sprint because I assume everyone will go on the soft compound of tyre. So the advantage we may have had being one of few people doing that strategy is out of the window. Everyone's going to be doing that. But this is the replay then. Oh, wow. What on earth was that? Fittipaldi with a flicks spin, then kind of spins it a second time, completely destroys his own car into the wall. That's a very odd one. He spins two different directions and then takes Schumacher with him in the Ferrari. I must, the, the Haas in, in recent episodes, I must say, have been very, very spin prone. Whether that's a design fault or something or other, at least this time it wasn't Drogovic because that would have made it four spins in the last, like, what, like six episodes of this career mode. Uh, it was Fittipaldi, but yeah, we're going to choose the soft compound attire. We're restarting this race on lap 19, so there'll be six laps. It's a six lap sprint here in Las Vegas as we go to five red lights for the second time tonight. Lights out, and away we go. Leclerc on pole. Poor chair, though, with a great effort in second place. Down the inside, the two will nearly come together. Little bit of contact, maybe potentially made. Poor chair on the left, Leclerc on the right. Meanwhile, Sonoma. Oda. He's trying to have a go at me, by the way. Look at the mirrors. He's there. That uh, Jap The Japanese driver on the left. It's going to be Lamborghini versus Aston Martin. Absolutely. Look at that. It's like a checkerboard pattern. You've got Aston uh, Lamborghini and then Lamborghini Aston on one, two, three, four. And it's going to be Leclerc that comes out on top. But we come out on top versus our fight versus Sonoda. But poor chair has an opportunity to re-overtake him. And uh, we may see a lot of this, to be honest, because now all of us on soft compound attire, it's just a blitz to the end, really. And poor chair secures P1 back away from Leclerc. And those two fought so much in that corner that we've caught up to them a little bit. Sonoda is giving me a bit of a worry, though. I'm constantly looking back behind me 
kind of feeling a bit paranoid almost because uh, Sonoda is keeping up with this. Obviously, we've got that damage, remember, so that's not helping us. But what is helping us is these two being side by side like this. Poor chair a bit deep into that corner, e even, in fact. And it's going to allow us to cut down on the inside of the left-hander. And we've got a great run of Leclerc. All of a sudden, hang on a minute, could we be into first place as we commit onto lap 21 on the inside? Leclerc on the outside. We're trying to get the elbow as Pierre Gasly sets a fast after the Grand Prix. So plenty of uh, action going on behind us. But here at the front, we have, well, somehow managed to find ourselves in P1. But Leclerc has a lot of speed. That Aston, that Aston Honda is so quick in a straight line when it's got the slipstream on you. It's ridiculous. And you can see I'm still having to contend with that damage as we have a little bit of uh, oversteer, unfortunately. But we are going to still be within one second of Leclerc to try and re-overtake him. But poor chair. Yeah, he had a mare there, actually. He went so deep and lost so much speed that he's down to P4 as we re-overtake Leclerc for P1. It's the two Astins fighting for two and three. Poor chair, nowhere to be seen. Sonoda dives down the inside. We've got a car maybe out the Grand Prix. Virtual safety car. Carbon fiber. Uh, flailing in the in the sky though, and oh no, oh Sonoda, oh Sonoda, on the virtual safety car, Sonoda is making a pit stop. I think what we just saw there was him nicking his front wing on Leclerc. Here's the replay. He made a big bold dive, and that's the massive bit of contact there. He basically vaulted the curb, and that huge hit on his own teammate has taken him out of the race. That's a shame for Aston. And for Sonoda, obviously, his consistency is not going to be there now. He got second place in the first round. Now he's going to be way down the order. And that was after he recovered so well. But now it's showtime again. The virtual safety car has ended. And we go racing once more. Leclerc applying the pressure. And that's not a good corner. The rear end steps out twice. And look at the launch Leclerc got off that section. Pretty much what I did to him and poor chair to get first place. Uh, in the first place, um, you know, just got the launch there and uh, we do re-overtake him. But Leclerc is just vying for this first place so much that he sends it down the inside. A little bit of contact made and he's really snapping at my heels. I think it's pretty clear in some of these corner exits and entries, we're really feeling that damage at this point because Leclerc is just all over the back of us. We're doing really well to still be in first, but for how much longer can we go? I mean, we've got two laps. Can we do this? Can we hang on to first place? Or will Leclerc have other ideas? He might just do, because he sends it to the inside of the blind left-hander. We left the door open. I should have shut that and defend that. I, I don't know why I pulled to the right. I mean, it's the natural racing line, but uh, we just left ourselves too vulnerable there, and Leclerc just saw a massive gap to go for. In the end, ironically, it kind of helps us in a way, because now we have the DRS on him and we re-overtake him and poor chair also gets him in the process so now all of a sudden it's a 1-2 for our team and poor chair goes deep again into that corner as he did before previously and he's now actually one second behind us so momentarily we've actually broken DRS as we go on to the second last after the Grand Prix Leclerc already trying to re-overtake him uh, say what you want Leclerc is uh, probably the most determined driver this entire race behind we've got Gasly Lawson Russell Ricardo over Stappen, Sainz Albon is the top 10, but Joe Guan Yu in the Williams is trying to change that. He's trying to overtake the McLaren. Uh, that's Piastri, sorry. So Piastri overtakes the Williams for P11. Uh, Albon P10, but uh, far cry from where McLaren were for most of the last couple of seasons. But uh, Sainz P9, Verstappen doing well to be in P8. Ricardo Russell in P6 and 7, to be fair, is actually very good for those two teams. Lawson doing well to be the more senior Red Bull driver in P5 then today. Gasly P4. He's, uh, he's got a good look of this fight going on between myself, Portrait and Leclerc. And Leclerc right now has got a great view of the teammate battle going on here as Portrait easily overtakes us. I've not put up too much of a, a squeeze or a fight because... There is no point. You just kind of have to settle in and try and hope you can hope you can re-overtake them. And that's exactly what we're going to try and do onto the last lap of the Grand Prix. Committed as ever through the final corner on the inside at turn one. We're going to just take poor chair a bit wide and get back into first place. But now the problem is 
DRS is coming up. Poor chairs behind us. So we are going to be a sitting duck once again. So do we defend this? Do we let him by? I'm trying to make up my mind as we're on the inside. Poor chair is fully ahead of us. But we see the gap. We have to go for it. Because if I let him by there... You never know, he might potentially walk away from us, so I'd rather have the track position. It's difficult to know, but we are in first place. Midway through this lap! Oh my god! Oh my god. Massive, massive crash behind between Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. The Red Bull car has been absolutely destroyed. And it's all because Carlos Sainz has simply lost it. Going for an overtake, maybe the tyre wear playing a factor, but he just moves left with DRS open, I think. Okay, that's what it is, DRS open. It's just, it just upset the rear end of his car, and he's completely taken Lando into that wall. Both tyres sheared off. Somehow, Sonoda's come through uh, just with some front wing damage, but yeah, that Red Bull has been absolutely decked into the wall there. So Carlando, both of them out of the Grand Prix late on. What a what a, a chaotic one this has turned into is we've only got 15 people still in this race as poor chair now all of a sudden is round the outside of us at a very crucial moment. We were both flat out, but he just had some great momentum there and got ahead of us, but we've got back into first. The problem is though, I am now the one without DRS. So I'm a sitting duck. Leclerc is on the right. Poor Chair is on the left. Gasly and Lawson are directly behind me as well with DRS. The top five in this race covered by a couple of tents. It's going to be three wide. Lawson vaults across the curb. Poor Chair still in first. Can we try and get the run? No! No, we've been spun by Lawson. And we're... <laughs> Come on. Oh my god. What an ending. What a tragic ending for us. What an exciting end for the neutral fan. Oh my god. There's a crash between Sonoda and Ricardo. We've been blocked. Well, we blocked Ricardo and Gasly. Uh, I couldn't f uh, spin it around without causing another crash myself. So I just had to keep it there. But my oh my. What an ending to this Grand Prix. The top five in this race all directly fighting for every position because Lawson went from P5 here momentarily was fighting for first then got shoved off we've gone around the outside and uh, it's just a it's, it's just a racing incident I can't blame Lawson at all for that that is just a racing incident that is so unlucky just a little bit of momentum difference between Lawson and myself a little bit of a squeeze obviously I was trying to get a launch on Leclerc and poor chair and to be honest I would have been surprised if something didn't happen with five cars that close to each other into the final corner on the last lap all fighting for P1 to 5 uh, madness and in the end of it Tail Porcher wins two in a row. And Las Vegas has its winner. And what a special victory that was. Taking the chequered flag under the neon lights of Nevada. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? A reliable car. That was the most important factor here. This was a real battle of attrition, and you could tell those at the front were trying to find a balance between running their outright pace and taking care of the car to reach the end. Well, what a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be incredibly happy with what they were able to achieve out there today. I think we're in trouble. I think we're in trouble. This kid is too quick and consistent and just everything. I think we've created a monster that we may not be able to beat. You know, there's a little bit of hope that obviously, yes, Leclerc was very close to winning that race, but he didn't. Poor chair won. And I just have that feeling, a bad feeling already two rounds into the season, that poor chair's AI just has, just has that bit of luck about him. Like, he's him. He just ends up having that luck that he needs to get the business. You know, it's the, the same kind of luck that I usually have to try and win championships but um, in the past. But... Uh, no, clearly the luck is not with me. Oh, that's so frustrating. We were leading going onto that main straight. And it is just a racing incident. I can't get mad at Lawson. That is just a racing incident. It's unfortunate. It happens when cars are that close together. Um, and we even spun around and we took Ricardo and Gasly. Uh, you know, obviously, had to be involve Gasly with us. So we're down in P5 and poor chair. Perfect 50 points on the board for him. Leclerc, though, up to second place with that solid podium. Lawson, third place, showing 
Uh, you know, Lawson was our, our main rival in the championship last season. And even though Red Bull don't look that quick this season, Lawson proving that he is that he might just drag Red Bull back into a title fight potentially. Audi and Haas underperforming a little bit compared to where they are on the R&D chart. But it's early days. It's early days. But what a chaotic chaotic and fantastic last uh, Las Vegas Grand Prix that was. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. When you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.